Hey friends, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. After a short break, we again have big IPOs in the pipeline. And this time, the big IPO is from the e-commerce company FSN E-Commerce Venture Limited, popularly known as Nika. The IPO size is 5,351 crore and Nika would be valued at around $7 billion, that is around 52,000 crore rupees. That would make Nika a large cap company right after the IPO. Now we have recently seen the IPO of Zomato that was also valued at similar valuation and had received stellar response. So the question is, can Nika also repeat Zomato's success? So in this video, we'll explore the business of Nika, its promoters, future growth and financials and then the IPO details. Finally, we'll look at the valuation along with its grey market premium and then decide if it is worth applying for the IPO or not. If you want to learn more about stock analysis, I've curated a complete course on money management with 100 plus videos. My website link is available in the description. Alright, let's get started. Established in 2012, Nika is an e-commerce platform that has a diverse product portfolio of beauty, personal care and fashion products, including their own in-house brands. So Nika not only provides an e-commerce platform for other brands, but it also has its own brands that are sold via its e-commerce platform. Within online business, Nika has got both websites and mobile apps. As of March 21, its mobile apps have a cumulative downloads of 43.7 million. Now that signifies Nika is quite popular in its category. Company also has an offline store with 73 physical stores in 38 cities of India as of March 21. If you look at the product portfolio of Nika for FY21, Nika has two major categories, beauty and personal care and fashion. Within beauty and personal care, Nika offers an extensive range of nearly 2 lakh SKUs from close to 2,500 brands. Across your makeup, skincare, healthcare, bath and body, fragrance, grooming appliances, personal care, health and wellness category, etc. It includes both domestic and international brands. Apart from this, Nika also has its own set of brands like your Nika Cosmetics, Nika Naturals, K-Beauty that are manufactured by third-party contracts. Apart from its own platform, its brands are also available on other third-party platforms. Now within fashion category, Nika has got around 18 lakh SKUs across 1350 brands that caters to men, women, kids and home category. These products are available across divisions like your western wear, Indian wear, footwear, bags, jewelry, accessories, athleisure, home decor, bath, bed and kitchen. It offers a mix of brands across established national brands, international brands, luxury brands and emerging labels and designers. Within fashion category, Nika has 6 in-house brands. In terms of business breakup, Nika has a gross merchandise value that is GMV of 4046 crore in FY21. It is basically the total value of the products being sold on its platform. We will discuss the growth separately in financial parameters. But as far as business breakup is concerned, out of rupees 4046 crore, this personal and beauty care contribute 83% in the GMV and fashion has remaining 17% contribution. Although the fashion segment is growing faster. If you look at the promoter and leadership, Nika founder and CEO is Falguni Nair. Before founding Nika, Falguni Nair worked with Kotak Mahindra Capital for 18 years where she also served as managing director. Her husband, Mr. Sanjay Nair, is a non-executive director of Nika. He is an IIM Ahmedabad alumni and has over 35 years of experience in banking and private equity. He worked with Citibank for 23 years where he served as CEO of Citibank for 6 years. He is also the chairman of KKR India and serves as board of director of various companies. Their daughter, Advaita Nair, is the CEO of Nika Fashion. She has completed her graduation from Yale and her master's from Harvard Business School. Their son, Anchit Nair, is the CEO of Nika.com. Before joining Nika, he had 8 years of experience in banking at Morgan Stanley. So basically, the entire family has the right qualification and experience to run the company. And due to that, in just 9 years, Nika has established itself 
from scratch to a stage today where it is launching its IPO at valuation of $7 billion. That is around 52,000 crore rupees. Now, as far as competition is concerned, although there is no listed competitor for Nika, there is strong competition from players like your Amazon, Mintra and Flipkart. In addition to online players, Nika also has strong competition from offline retail players. If you look at the key risk, then of course, competition risk will always exist. But I think one of the key risks with online beauty and fashion is the damage of brand image. There are many cases of counterfeit products being sold by various suppliers on e-commerce platform. Some products are also illegal. For example, in November 2019, beauty products in their Mumbai warehouse were identified to be illegally manufactured by Belize Italia, a manufacturer which had at the time of manufacturing already surrendered its manufacturing license. Such incidents can damage the brand reputation and can impact the business. If you look at the future growth, as per research, the Indian beauty and personal care market is estimated to grow from 1.1 lakh crore rupees in FY20 to 2 lakh crore by 2025. So the Indian beauty and personal care market is expected to almost double in next 4 to 5 years. The Indian fashion market is estimated to grow from 3.8 lakh crore rupees in FY20 to 8.7 lakh crore by FY25 which is more than 2x growth in 5 years. Overall, the beauty, personal care and fashion industry is expected to reach 10.6 lakh crore by FY25. Now from an industry point of view, that's a huge, huge market. The key growth drivers are your increasing usage of e-commerce website for your online shopping, then rising awareness towards personal grooming, then increasing spending towards your personal and beauty product, then shift from unorganized to organized sector, then demand for high quality, premium and branded products, and then increasing usage of internet and smartphone. And we have got a huge young population in India. Apart from all these factors, I think one of the biggest growth driver is the rising influence of social media influencers and celebrities. The young generation is highly inspired by those influencers and celebrities and want to look like them and they are willing to spend money for it. And India is the youngest country in the world. So the market is huge. Another interesting fact is that within e-commerce, beauty and personal care have low penetration of just 8% in FY21. Fashion has 12% penetration in FY21. Now this is a very low penetration as compared to other categories like your mobile and electronics. I think one of the reasons for low penetration of beauty and personal category is that consumers are concerned about the authenticity of the product. Nobody would want to use a duplicate cream or a makeup product. And that's where consumers still prefer to shop beauty products offline. But there is a good scope for increasing this penetration in beauty and personal care category. Overall, the future growth prospects are looking very bright. Since it is an IPO, we have limited financial data of only last 3 years. If you look at the growth rate, Nika GMV that is gross merchandise value has grown from 1650 crore in FI19 to 4046 crore by FI21. So that's more than double in last 2 years. Its revenues have grown from 1116 crore in FI19 to 2432 crore by FI21. If you look at the net profit, Nika was in loss during FI19 and FI20. Although it has become profitable in FI21 and profit stood at 61.9 crore. Company has debt to equity of 0.4. As far as profitability ratios are concerned, company was in loss in FI19 and FI20, so both ROE and ROCE were negative. For FI21, its ROE stood at 8.34%. Overall, the revenue and GMV have grown at a very good rate, but the company was in loss till FI20. Hence, we don't have enough data to comment on the overall financials. Nika IPO window is between 28th October to 1st November, excluding the weekend on 30th and 31st October. Its price band is between 1085 rupees to 1125 rupees. Face value of each share is rupees 1, market lot is 12 share, and minimum investment is rupees 13,500. The IPO issue size is rupees 5,351 crore. Out of this, there is a fresh issue of equity of rupees 630 crore and remaining 4721 crore is offered for sale where promoters are diluting their stake. So the majority of money 
from the IPO would go in the promoter's pocket. The 630 crore raised from the IPO would be used for setting up new retail stores, setting up warehouses, repayment of certain debt and general corporate expenses. Out of this IPO, 75% of the issue size has been reserved for qualified institutional buyers, 10% for retail investors and the remaining 15% for non-institutional investors. In terms of market cap, at price band of Rs 1125, company would be valued at Rs around 52,000 crore. Now if you look at the valuation, it is the most trickiest part. The reason is because Nika represents the new age digital business similar to Zomato. And we don't have similar company listed in the online fashion and beauty space in the Indian stock exchange. So we can't really compare with anyone. The closest competition would be with Zomato. So Nika is also launching its valuation at the same level as that of Zomato that is around $7 billion. Now if you look at the traditional metric to check the valuation which is P ratio that Nika was in loss during FI19 and FI20. However, it was in profit in FI21. So its FI21 earning per share was 1.33 rupees and it is launching its IPO at a price band of 1125. So its P ratio based on FI21 numbers would be 845 which is exorbitantly high. So if you go by traditional valuation parameter, the valuations are crazy. However, we also need to consider the fact that the company is growing at a rapid rate. Now the problem with such digital companies is that there is no foolproof parameter to gauge the valuation. You might look at price to sale which is around 21.5 for FR21 and do DCF analysis based on assumptions but can't really gauge the right valuation. So I just researched to check when did Nika became a unicorn that is a billion dollar company. And I found that Nika became a unicorn only last year in May 2020. Now within one year and five months of becoming a unicorn, Nika has launched an IPO at a $7 billion valuation which is seven times its last year valuation. Now I don't understand what happened in last one year that the valuations have gone up crazy by seven times. The only justifiable answer I could see is the current euphoria in the stock market where there is huge amount of liquidity. As far as retail investors are concerned, they only have one interest. What is the listing gain? And that is driven by grey market premium. So currently there is a grey market premium of around 60% on Nika. But please note that it is all based on sentiments. It changes every day. But based on the response Zomato has received, I think that Nika would also get a very good response. Although I think that Zomato is highly overvalued and so is Nika at current valuation. Overall, if we conclude, Nika is in the business of online beauty, personal care and fashion industry and among the leader in the business with almost 2 million SKUs and around 4,000 brands on its platform. It also has its own range of private label brands. It has a strong promoter base with the Nair family having the right qualification and experience. As far as future growth is concerned, there is ample room of growth for online beauty, personal care and fashion industry. The key growth drivers include your rising adoption of online shopping, increasing penetration of smartphone and internet, huge young population that aspires to look good and the rising influence of celebrities and social media influencers that attract the young generation. Overall, the company is fundamentally strong with bright growth prospect. Now as far as valuation is concerned, there is no traditional parameter to gauge the valuation. But I think that the current IPO valuations are highly overstretched. However, looking at the current euphoria in the market, I think that Nika will get a good response. As a retail investor, I would say that keep an eye on the grey market premium and the subscription status and you can consider investing for short term listing gain. For long term investors, it gets very tricky as on one side, company is fundamentally strong and well positioned with its leadership in the beauty and personal care category with very good growth prospect. But on the other side, it is very expensive. Personally, I believe that for the long term investment, there are many good companies already available in the market that also have a bright growth prospect and available at a decent valuation. So be very careful with long term investment in Nika at current valuation. So in this video, we discuss the IPO of Nika. I hope you will find this analysis useful. Now tell me in the comments if you are going to apply for this IPO or not and will it be for listing gain or for long term. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.